This week, property therapy, as we catch up with two couples in Norfolk. The only way to get out of the rut is with absolute honesty. There's stubbornness. Do you see any areas of compromise? I really don't. And confusion. I, I'm, are I'm we getting... giving you mixed messages? Luckily, we are highly trained professionals. <laughs> I have good mind reading skills. Yeah. But with the pressure of this search, we may start to lose the plot too. Oh no, they haven't got any confidence in me. <laughs> no! <laughs> This week, we're catching up with two sets of house hunters who were making moves across the country in pursuit of a different way of life. They were both searching for new homes in a totally new patch, but not having a lot of luck. So it was down to Kirsty and I to do our stuff. Both couples want to relocate to Norfolk, a big sky county blessed with an impressive range of quality property. Historic market towns, idyllic villages, and 93 miles of unspoilt coastline make this a popular holiday destination. House prices here are 12% below the national average, but the market is hotting up, so time is not on our side. Kirsty's searching with Yvonne and Lisa, a pair of northern lasses who are desperate to become Norfolk broads. They'll be focusing their search on the villages southwest of Norwich, between Wyndham, Thetford and Dis. While I'll be 50 miles north, cruising the towns and villages along the Norfolk coastline, hunting for a scenic seaside home for retirees John and Peggy Williams, who hooked up 15 years ago. We first met when I put an ad in the newspaper, personal ads column, and John answered my ad. I found Peggy in between the birth, deaths and marriages section. Sounded like a good sort. So is it dinners on a tray, slippers warming by the fire at a low maintenance garden? Not quite. John worked as a computer games producer and with £450,000, plans to create an open plan home that incorporates everything from mood lighting to a fully automated home entertainment system. We are definitely not traditional pensioners. The last thing we want to do is just to fade away into the, the sunset. Quite so, but on the issue of the new house, there's a bit of disagreement. Now, I'm probably slightly different, less keen to have a major project. For the last 11 years, they've been living together in Derby. But now their property is sold, they're ready to fulfil their dream of moving to the Norfolk coast. 62, my oh. first home together. <laughs> Start of a new adventure. Are you really 62? Are you? <laughs> ah. With close to 150 miles between them and their search area, house hunting has been heavy going so far. But with you on board, Phil, it should be plain sailing. Now, the budget's 450. Yeah, exactly. Decent sum of money. Yes. But there's quite a lot of requirements that come with it. Tell me what the priorities are. What, what have we absolutely got to get right? We want to be able to walk to the sea. It needs to be a, a nice, quiet location, peaceful, but not isolated. Um, tell me about the house itself. Something with character, but also something with potential, something that we can actually do a lot to. I love technology, but of course I can add that at a later stage. He's got it all mapped out, hasn't he? John is looking for a big project. Now, I'd be quite comfortable with a less big project. Okay. It's just I have concerns about living in a building site. What do you think my challenges will be? We're so remote from, uh, from the Norfolk coast that we haven't actually had the ability to look around all the areas, and we're hoping that you can actually find somewhere that we would possibly not have even considered. But we have faith in you. <laughs> You've been watching too much TV. Yeah, I do, I do think so, possibly. <laughs> Peggy and John have a maximum spend of £450,000 and an extensive wish list. John wants a major project, whereas Peggy is more interested in the feel of a property. It should be detached and secluded, with character, have four bedrooms, a big garden and a garage. I think I'm going to have my work cut out for me on this one. Our second set of intrepid house hunters are nurse practitioner Yvonne Walker and her partner, forest ranger Lisa Bealby. Twelve months ago, they decided to swap the hustle and bustle of city life in Leeds for a more tranquil existence in Norfolk. 
So they sold up in the north, moved into rented in the east, and with a budget of £325,000, began to hunt for their dream home. But things haven't exactly gone to plan. Our search has been a bit chaotic um, because we, one minute we're looking at an old cottage, maybe that, we don't think that's going to work, so then we start looking at a newer build house. There's just too much going on. For Lisa, it's all about outbuildings and acreage. But for Yvonne, getting the house right is the priority. I think I'm a lot easier to please. I'm looking at the outside more than the inside. Yeah, you do say that, but you do have quite a lot of stipulations about the inside as well. Unsurprisingly, this lack of direction has netted them precisely nothing, unless you count 35 rejected properties and a whole heap of confusion. It's all starting to get a bit much. I really desperately need to find somewhere. And I think until we find somewhere that actually is our home, I won't properly feel like I live here. I still feel like a bit like a visitor. We need to reboot this search, but to do that is going to take a bit of shock therapy. In your heart of hearts, why do you think you haven't found something so far? When I go to see a house, it might seem perfect, but I get into my head that there must be something wrong with it. Lisa, would you say that Yvonne was risk-averse? I would say she's definitely risk-averse. She worries about everything. She'll find a problem with anything. Top three most important requirements off the top of your head. Detached. Yeah. Um, large, decent-sized garden. Mm -hmm. Quiet road. Quiet road. Detached houses in this neck of the woods have gone up since you started looking. Mm -hmm. We are uncomfortable not yeah. being on the market at the moment. I think the answer is let's use Yvonne's risk averseness to our advantage. Don't be worried about the risk of buying the house, be worried about the risk of not buying the house. Yes. Definitely. Resuscitation underway. Yvonne and Lisa have got a maximum spend of £325,000 and want a detached house in a quiet location, close to a village pub. The property should also have at least two bedrooms and a big garden. Lisa's pretty handy, so she wants a double garage and outbuildings to store all her tools. And she's happy to do renovation work if required. Better get your best searching shoes on, Kirsty. In Norfolk, almost 10% of properties are second homes, and there's a bit of a shortage for the eager buyer. But I think I've found a contender for John and Peggy in the village of West Runton. It's within walking distance to the beach, and if John wants a project, there's plenty of scope for it here. We're going to have a look at this house. Yes, that's yes. nice. There are currently four bedrooms, two reception rooms, and a separate kitchen. But this configuration could easily be altered by John, giving him that project he's after. It's being marketed just short of £360,000, 90 grand under budget, so there's enough money left over for John to let his imagination run wild. Come on in. Thank you. All right. But come through to the main room. Oh. This house could be opened up very easily and very nicely. Yes. Yes. With the kitchen currently through there. Looks to me as if we should go out that way. It's got the aspect already on the garden, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's all we were talking about, pushing out at the back. Yes. John is a man with a plan. There's no denying that. And I'm pleased that he can see the potential here, as can Peggy. But I'm concerned that what I have to show him next might derail his enthusiasm. I wanted you to see where the railway is at the end of the garden. It's sunk low. It's a local railway, so it's not intercity or anything. Yes, I, I think we're looking for somewhere sort of tranquil, and I mm. don't think having a train line at the end of the garden quite hits that mark. We'll see. It'll be interesting to go out Can't have it all, John. No. <laughs> Can't have it all. <laughs> Although I fear that's exactly what he's expecting. I would actually use this as a different room. Oh and have the, the social kitchen uh, where the living room is at the moment and push out. I think this could do, well, it could make a good office, actually. Oh, right. Do you see out the window? I do. And the railway is just there. You know, there is always going to be the compromise, isn't there? I know, there? but that's going to be far worse in the summer. Mm, I know. So Peggy understands the need for a bit of give and take. At least that's one of them on board. I'm not going to have a moan, I promise, because John is making very valid points. 
It's just that he's got a very long list of requirements and the most important of them was going to be walking distance to the beach and ability to do a project. I'm not going to say any more than that. He's a very clever man. It's just he's missing one word out of his vocabulary and it begins with C. I've got one beginning with C for you. Confrontation. So, how are we doing? What's the verdict? There are some downsides, as you pointed out, yeah. but the property itself actually could be turned into something wonderful. Mm. I've got other houses to show you, so um, I'm happy with that. We should move on. Uh, and I should just kind of emphasise, I am absolutely here to find you the best possible house that I can. But you do realise you're not going to get everything, don't you? Oh. No-one ever does. <laughs> <laughs> you, you really do think you're going to get everything? <laughs> no! Where's the emergency escape hatch? Please tell me there is one. This week, we're catching up with two sets of house hunters who made life-changing moves. I'm in Norfolk with house hunters Yvonne and Lisa, who've made the leap from Leeds but have yet to land on their feet. And I'm with young at heart retirees John and Peggy, who are leaving behind the Midlands to fulfil their ambition of life by the sea. While the property I showed them in West Runton offered some of the things they're after, they're still hoping I'll be able to find them a house with everything they're after. No pressure there, then. And with Lisa and Yvonne, worry and indecision have been holding them back from spending their £325,000 on a detached house in the country. But I've now officially appointed myself as their new life coach, so everything is going to be all right. How does the house strike you? It's not bad. <laughs> it's slightly pink. <laughs> you you need to tell me what's going through your mind. You, as we, when we were sitting in the pub and talking about the rut, yep. the only way to get out of the rut is with absolute honesty. Mm -hmm. And if I'm being honest, this place pretty much hits all the points on their wish list. There are three bedrooms, two reception rooms and a new kitchen. Plus, it's in move-in condition. With two-thirds of an acre, this gives Lisa the garden she wants, and although there's no garage for her tools, it would be no trouble to build one. It's on the market at £350,000, 25 grand over their budget. But we know that a deal could be done within their price range. Before we head inside, though, I want to walk them around this fabulous garden. You've got a shed here. All, All of right. this goes round. All the way up there? Yep. Oh, right down there. there. Right yep. down there? Yep. That's really yep. good. Right down there. So, moving on, this is the sitting room, and then coming in now to your diner kitchen. It's yeah, nice. I like the fireplace. Mm. I'm sort of thinking about how I would change it. Yes. Obviously, this wouldn't be the sort of furniture we would put in. No, you can't look at the furniture. Yeah. I... You, you want to uh, feel it, yeah. I suppose. There are a few cracks on the, on the render. Is that just the render, or is that...? If you're looking in the country and you're looking at this kind of house, there are going to be cracks. Mm. Melissa's nodding a lot. She's got that expression on her face of a woman who's quite pleased that someone other than her is saying these things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of dump up there. Yep. We're not ganging up on Yvonne. It's just that first viewings are simply about deciding whether you want to live in a place rather than worry warting. I like it. It's kind of... I'm absorbing it and about how I would have it, because I think it, yeah. it looks a bit plain at the minute. Sometimes people ask me, why do people need help buying a house? And this is exactly why. This is house hunting with hand-holding, and it's what Yvonne needs. I can hear the road noise. Yeah, you can. Can you? Yeah. yeah. Is that a problem, you think, the noise? <laughs> it puts me off. Does it? Yeah. All is good. This is only stage one on the path to property enlightenment. Keep the faith. So, what's your feelings? Really like it, but with the road, the A11 is making quite a lot of noise out there at the moment, and it just yeah. kind of doesn't give me that kind of we're in the middle of nowhere sort of feel. There's always a compromise. Yeah. And what you have to do in a house hunt is find out what is a compromise too far? I'm not prepared to say no to this. Oh, really? House, I don't think. Yeah. OK. OK. I'm loving this whole life coach thing. Go me. Back up on the coast, I'm still searching for a dream home for John and Peggy to enjoy their golden years in. 
After a lukewarm reaction at the last property, I'm hoping to heat things up in the quintessential Norfolk seaside town of Sheringham. Peggy's been quite clear she doesn't mind a bit of work, but she's nowhere near as gung-ho as Project Hungry John. So it's time to redress the balance. I've kind of cast this one as more of a Peggy house. Oh, right. I wanted to kind of explore an option that wasn't so much of a project. Yeah. Well, I noticed there's no garage, which uh, we were hoping for. And also the, the width of the property means that there's nowhere to put a garage. Sure. Which could be a, a potential issue. What I would really like is if John just relaxed and enjoyed the viewing so we can find out a bit more about what Peggy wants. There are hints of the contemporary style they like here, but overall, the decor is a bit more traditional, with two bright reception rooms, four bedrooms and a good-sized garden. It's just shy of £340,000, 110 grand below their budget, so more than enough to install all of John's high-tech gadgetry. Over the last three years, everything's been done. So oh, it's right. rewired, replumbed, extended windows. Yes, the lot. The lot. All the things I want to do. John, if you don't mind me saying, so you're kind of... You've got a look about you that says, I'm going to try and be interested, but really... <laughs> no, I'll, I will certainly look at the rest of the house. I mean, it's a really nice kitchen. I don't think we would actually do it this way, to be honest. But we, so, but, but we wouldn't change it from no, something we that was perfectly it. acceptable, would we? I think there I'm, might be a little bit I think of so. d disharmony here between yes. us. In that. <laughs> I'd be quite okay. happy to go with certain things that John might not be yeah. so happy to. We so, looked at a John house this morning. Yeah. We're looking at a Peggy house this afternoon. Yeah. Once again, Peggy's open-minded about the idea of compromise. But John keeps on shutting those doors. So this is the main living space that they've added on to the back. Oh, right. Mm. Yes. L-shaped room. Yes. Um, Unusual Supported shape. by the dining the room. The dining room, which, which looks a nice size room. And now a lacklustre response from Peggy, which is somewhat worrying. This search is rapidly getting out of hand. I think it may be time for that confrontation. Where are you g genuinely at between a turnkey property versus a project? Well, you've brought us to a turnkey pr property and it's still not fulfilling our criteria. So I think a project is the way we're going to go. I, I'm, are we I'm giving you mixed messages? No, I'm getting the... Things are becoming clearer. Good. Doesn't make it necessarily any easier yeah. because the market is tough and the wish list is long. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sensing any element of the wish list which... We can let go of. Yeah. Yes. I think I need you to have the same discussion with John as well to find out if... Because I think he was the one who, who is the one that needs to identify the compromise. I've just been wondering why on earth I always get myself in these kind of awkward situations where I have to be mediator between man and wife. It is part of the role of a house finder, but it, it's not easy, particularly with John. He's very set in his ways. But you love it, Phil, helping a damsel in distress. You two in here? Yes. Have yes. a look around. look at the garden. Yeah. How did you get on, John? It does have um, lots of very nice rooms, but I have a feeling I would still want to make some changes. Do you see any areas of compromise or...? I really don't, to be totally honest. I'm just hoping we can find everything we're after. I'm kind of worried that your list of requirements is so lengthy and so specific. It means we've got very few properties that we can seriously consider. And it's a question of kind of how long you're prepared to wait to find it. This is going to be our final move, and we've got to make sure it's 100% right. Yeah. Well, I've done my best, but I'm not sure it's enough to bring him round. And I'm running out of places to show them. Further inland with Yvonne and Lisa, I've asked Phil to come along for a group therapy session. If I'm going to get these girls thinking differently, I need to shake things up a bit. So I've taken a gamble with my second property. It's in Bannham, a pretty little village. It's on a big plot and there's no road noise. I think it's perfect for them. Yvonne and Lisa had seen it online and wrote it off because Lisa doesn't like bungalows. But this is more than just a bungalow. I love this house. OK. Just so you know. What do you love about it? 
I love its crickle windows. I love its parquet flooring. I love its vast garden. I love its incredibly peaceful position. I love the fact that it really looks no different from when it was built in the early 40s. So I think I've got confused. I thought we were looking for a house for Von Lisa, <laughs> not you. Phil, don't try and get clever with me. What do you guys think? Not a lot to see at the moment, is there? It's not very attractive, I think, what you're trying to say. Agey on the outside, but worth a second look. Surely that's your department, Phil. <clears throat> Moving on. This place needs a fair bit of work, and it'll be interesting to see how they react to that. But it's got space and character with a large living room, separate dining room, lovely retro kitchen and five bedrooms. Add to that a garage, outbuildings and a substantial plot, and this place could be amazing when fully done up. It's on the market and offers in excess of £310,000. We've got just under an acre here, and it opens out to farmland at the back, so in terms of kind of privacy. Are you thinking, let's humour her? <laughs> or are you thinking, this could be a house in which we live? I really like it. It's really nice outside. Yeah, it's got great potential. And... Please don't humour her, oh, ever. No, <laughs> what happens if we do? <laughs> terrible road to go down. No. Phil, I humour you all the time. You just don't know it. With Yvonne's track record of worry, I want to make sure the level of work here doesn't scare her off. Now, you're the one, Yvonne, that's supposed to be frightened of this house. Yeah, I'm meant to be frightened of it. And I suppose I am a little in the fact that I think there's quite a lot of work to do. Do you think, essentially, that if you're passionate enough about something, you, you could overcome I'd hope fears. so, yeah. yes. I yeah. hope so, yeah. Because if the setting's right and I get a right feel for it, then I'll be prepared to do the work. Yeah. I do like it. I like it. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. I wanted to show you what happens out the back here. Look at that. Wow. Nice. And coming through here, you've got another two rooms. This would be fantastic for my tools, cos I like a spot of DIY. So seeing a house like that doesn't faze you? Not one little bit, no. How do you sense Yvonne's dealing with this? I think she really likes the place. And for you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it was more about the setting and the position. It than was, the yes. Yeah, I'm not that as particular as mm -hmm. Yvonne for the inside, no. But it's still important Lisa has a good look around, particularly if it's going to be her doing most of the work. Nice light room. Yeah, peaceful. Hmm, we like this. I've got to be honest, when I first saw this house, I thought, brave choice, Kirsty, brave choice. You've got 100% right. It was a good choice. It's really sweet. I get Stand the feeling you want something, Phil. This, this whole conversation unnerves me. Really? Yeah. Can't work out what it is, but I will eventually ascertain what it is you an want apple? of me. This is an apple that has easily fallen from the tree. Nice pear. Quite firm as well. I bet they'd taste good. Mm. <laughs> Look at that, farm views. You could have a little haven out here, couldn't you? Look at the view. That's lovely. I think we've all learnt a valuable lesson about prejudice and bungalows. It's a chalet, Phil, a chalet. At the end of our first day together, it's all looking pretty peachy. Yeah. If I say it's so it myself. It certainly <laughs> does. I think so. Well, I'm pleased. I mean, I thought I'd better check that Kirsty was doing a half-decent job, and it turns out she was. Yes, she yes. was. I need to worry. Mm, absolutely not. He's never going to get bored of saying yeah. things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the only question remaining is, shall I or shan't they? Give me strength. We're back to visit two couples who dreamed of finding perfect properties in a new part of the country. I'm in East Anglia with hindered house hunters Lisa and Yvonne, who are struggling to make a fresh start in a stale market. And I'm working with a pair of golden oldies who really do want to live beside the seaside. Yvonne and Lisa are definitely making progress towards a purchase. Two houses down and already two contenders. Whereas up on the coast, after a difficult last viewing with Peggy and John, I'm hoping that some joint decisions have been made about where their compromises lie. For our final property, we're staying in the town of Sheringham otherwise known as Last Chance Saloon. 
Well, this house here has just come to the market. I think it's an absolute belter. But I'm a bit nervous because it is my last chance to get it right for John and Peggy. <laughs> All OK? Hello, yes, hi, lovely. Yeah, Holding yeah. hands, obviously still in love. How are discussions? Any conclusions? I think, in reality, we appreciate there's got to be compromise somewhere. And maybe we, we, you know, we could potentially have something that's not quite as much of a project. Okay. That's the mix between the pro project Projection. and cosmetic. Yeah. Well, it just so happens. <laughs> well, <Yay>. straight <laughs> Come on, you two. Phil, you seem to have worked your magic again, you schmoozy old charmer. I barely recognise John. Thanks, Kirsty. And while we're on the subject of flexibility, after a moderate amount of reworking, this place could be perfect for them. As usual, the layout could change, but the important thing is that overall there's the space they want. In its current form, there are two reception rooms, a kitchen, four double bedrooms and a well-maintained garden. It's just come onto the market at a touch under £380,000, 70 grand below budget, so money left over to do what they want to do. But before we head inside, I want to show them the real selling point of this place and the main reason they're in Norfolk. Oh, my word. Uh, you wanted a little bit of peace, countryside, ability to see the sea. Well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a fabulous that, view. It is. So far, so good with the setting and the view. But as we know, it's the inside that has to strike a tricky balance. I've kind of pictured this as the middle ground between the two of you, if you like. Yeah. It's big enough for you. Yes. So it doesn't need extending. No. But yet there is still plenty for John to get involved in in terms of updating it. Yeah, I'm, I'm already trying to work out how we can add some, some nice techie gadgets to the property. I'm not a fan of conservatories. Mm. I, I would actually probably replace that, but generally it's got the feel. Yes. And it's, it's a property that you would want to do it to. Credit where credit's due. John isn't single-mindedly focused on his project this time. He's starting to think more like Peggy about the home they could create together. That's lovely, isn't it? It is. They're like different people. Mind you, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised because it is a very good option and it's a good option for both of them. That's what I was trying to find. It's time to put my feet up. The bath needs changing, doesn't it? It does. And the whole suite. Yes. But we could do that. I think we could do that. I think you could modernise this yes, really nicely. very easily. There have been several moments throughout this search when I really thought we weren't going to find them the perfect house, but we might just have done it. I think we like this one. I would... I would endorse what you've just said. I think it's yeah, lovely. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. It's been a good viewing. We're very, very happy, I yes. think. Right. It's been a journey. So this is the property they want but I've still got to secure it, which means the journey's not over for us yet. Or indeed for Kirsty, with one more property to show Yvonne and Lisa. North Lopham is a lovely village with a shop and a pub less than 10 minutes walk from this final house. Unlike property two, the retro chalet, this place needs no work and it looks pretty smart as well. I think we could be onto a winner here. I feel Lisa's been very patient. But she did want a house with curb appeal. Mm -hmm. okay. And so here we have it. Beautiful. It's very nice. Is that what you had in your mind? Yes, definitely. I think this house could be perfect for them. There are three reception rooms, a kitchen diner and four bedrooms, so plenty of space. Lisa gets her garage and there's a large mature garden. It's on at £349,000, 24 grand over their budget. But we've been led to believe there could be some movement on this. Needs a new kitchen. Uh, no, I think uh, it needs new kitchen tops and the yeah. doors need painting. This house needs nothing doing to it except everything that is painted or stained dark wood needs to be painted white. It's not a project. You just move in, that would be brilliant. just move in. And this surely should be good for Yvonne. The less they have to do, the less she has to worry about. This is far beyond what I was expecting to see. And it's better than the other two properties. I mean, what are we saying? House number one out of the yeah. picture. Yeah. House number one out of the picture. Yeah, House number two... It's getting, like... that, it's getting that way for me, personally. House number two out of the picture. Why do you say that? What's... Because this is a much prettier house 
It's in a great village, there's a pub it's just a really around the story. corner. The garden looks amazing, it's private. I think you've sold it to Lisa, haven't you? Devon, where's your mind at? Because um, this morning I was planning what I would do to the other house. And I think I probably like both of them in their own way. It looks like my therapeutic pairs have reached a new high. They've gone from liking nothing to being spoiled for choice. I hope it doesn't start Yvonne worrying again. I'm, I'm, I'm liking you, it. I'm thinking it is what, quite are big. Are you still thinking about the other place? Well, yeah, the, but also the money here, it's a lot more money for... Yeah, but at the other house, you've got to remember that it would cost money to do it up. Yeah. There's more to do We'd there. We'd end up spending. Where this place, we could just move in. I hate showing people things which are stretching their budget. But sometimes it is a necessary evil. Because something has to go. If it's not the double garage, if it's not being in good nick, if it's not the curb appeal, if it's not the quart road, if they stick with all the things they want, then the compromise is the budget. Time to find out what's going to give. This is kind of what we originally had in our mind's eye, I think. You've yeah. seen over 30 houses mm -hmm. in a year. Is this definitely the best one you've seen? This, for me, is definitely the best one. Yeah, it's definitely the best one. It's perfect. It is. And I want it. <laughs> is Lisa the decision maker, on at the end of the day? Definitely. She is the decision maker. If I said I wanted to go back now to house number two, Lisa, what would you say? It's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so now their only worry is the price. 24 grand over budget. But that's the sort of challenge I like. Well, it's down to you to work your magic then, Kirsty. I want to secure that house. 325 is the top of your budget. 325 isn't a million miles away from what they're asking. Let's take it off their hands. You happy to go ahead? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hi, Mike, it's Kirsty. Uh, we've sat down uh, and had a bit of a chat. And the upshot is that Yvonne and Lisa uh, really want this house. They are looking to stay within their budget as agreed by their mortgage company, um, which is £325,000. Now, I know that the house is on the market at just under three fifty. Do you think there is a snowball's chance in hell? OK. Thanks so much, Mike. Brilliant. This is the bit I hate when we just sit here and wait. But there's barely time to drink their tea. Hello? Oh, that's not good news that you've rung back so quickly. OK. OK, I will... Get straight back to you. I will pass that message on to my client and I will get straight back to you. Thank you very much. Okie doke. Okay. Bye. They said yes. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> So shocks all round, but what a result. It's been just over a year since Kirsty helped Yvonne and Lisa find their perfect property in Norfolk, and they've thoroughly thrown themselves into putting their personal touch on it. Before, the kitchen was dark and dated, but Kirsty's suggestion of a lick of light paint has helped transform it into a calm cooking haven. It looks so much better than it did. And it's not just the kitchen that's seen big changes. We've taken all the bathroom out, and now we're in the process of tiling that and putting a nice bathroom in. We've put um, a wood burner in the living room. We've extended the fireplace out, and we've put some... We've used reclaimed brick, so it adds a bit more character to the whole room. Brings this part of the house alive a little bit. It's, uh, it's nice, cos we, we spend a lot, a lot more time in here now. At the start of the search, the prospect of committing to buying terrified Yvonne, but with a little help from Kirsty, she managed to take the plunge, and the girls couldn't be happier. Kirsty was so helpful in pointing out that you shouldn't worry about the silly little things, and you could say, I think you could see past it, couldn't you? And, and I think I would have been too worried to buy this house without com Kirsty's confidence because I'd have thought that it was going to cost too much to maintain it. Um, but actually, yeah, it looks like it gave us the confidence to go for it, really. 
And it's not just all the improvements inside the house that have put smiles on their faces. Forest ranger Lisa's also managed to fulfill a little fantasy of hers. I've always wanted a, a sit-down lawnmower, yes. So I, I needed somewhere with enough grass to justify. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do like a big garden. Lisa's also been busy bringing the ponds back to life and isn't planning to stop there. And um, I'm going to put a stream in um, with a little, well, a little waterfall. And then next spring, I'm going to put some shrubs and landscape it, basically. As well as the perfect property and a great garden, becoming part of a local community and a decent boozer was high up their wish list too. It's been really nice settling in here. Um, we've got some fantastic neighbours just by us. And in addition, we've, the pub as well is great, particularly on a Friday night. Everyone goes in the pub on a Friday night. And it's been a really good opportunity, hasn't it, yeah. to meet people and, and get to know other local villages. And... It's very friendly. So we've got chatting to quite a few people there. It's a really lovely village to live in from a sort of social point of view. Before their search, Yvonne and Lisa were in limbo, feeling more like visitors to Norfolk than locals and were desperate to lay down permanent roots. Finding this house has given us the opportunity really to, to just get on with living our lives down here. We know we've got loads to do in the house, loads to do in the garden, lots to keep us busy. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of where we can settle into to living. Can't imagine living anywhere else. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. It's almost like we're meant to live here, actually. It's kind of a bit cliched, maybe, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think now we've, we've finally got the house and now we are moving to Norfolk, we've, we've finally found what we were looking for. And I'm, so, I'm just so grateful to Kirsty for finding us it. She's, she's a star. She's one in a million, is that all, Sop? I just hope when the time comes, my couple will be speaking as highly of me. We're catching up with two couples who were relocating to Norfolk. Yvonne and Lisa have finally found the house to make them feel at home here. Yes, you. <laughs> But with John and Peggy, we're not over the finish line yet. They have their sights set on a fantastic property and are keen to make an offer. It's on the market for 380,000. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty fresh on the market. I think only one other person has seen it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm. Um, the general thought locally is that the houses opposite the one that we're looking mm -hmm. at would be worth about 340. Mm -hmm. The view would probably put 50 grand on the price of any house with that view. Have you got a figure in mind? Well, we've been sort of chatting about it and, and we don't know whether or not something like 350 would be just too cheeky or not. Let's start at 350 yeah. and um, engage the reaction. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Jen, it's Phil Spencer. I do have an offer for you from John and Peggy. The, the figure um, that I've been asked to submit to you is for 350,000. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Good luck. Bye. She promised to submit it in as positive light as she can. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, Peggy and John's opening gambit is rejected, as is their second offer of £360,000. So they're giving it one last push with their best and final bid of 362, hoping that this will be enough to seal the deal. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jen. Mm-hmm. OK. I'll pass that news on and, uh, and we'll see where we go. Thanks. You've just bought a hat. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, 362. All agreed. Oh, thank you. Phil. Off the market, the board's coming down this afternoon. Come on. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you. So, deal done on the perfect project for John and Peggy. I couldn't be happier. It's been just over a year since I helped John and Peggy find a home to make their dream of living by the sea a reality. 
There's no denying that this sprightly pair had very clear ideas about what it was that they wanted and what they wanted to do to it. So I'm back to see how they're getting on. Well, it looks like they've been hard at it already. Bit of work going on. Hello. Hi there. Welcome. Very, Lovely very nice to, to see you. Great right. to see Hello, you John. again. I can see you've started out the front. Oh, yes. Have, yes, we've, we've started we've out the front. Come and have a look what we've done in here. Yeah. Yeah. You've been busy? Well, yeah. you two are always busy. When John and Peggy bought this house, the old-fashioned downstairs was a far cry from the modern pad they longed for. But thanks to some serious grafting, they've transformed it into a slick open-plan area they can really enjoy. Oh, it, this is a different house. <laughs> it is. Did you knock it down and build another one? <laughs> we did. Yes. Sort of, yes. There's been a lot of structural work wow. going on, but it's really nice. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. It's thank absolutely you. gorgeous. <laughs> what a difference a year makes. Gone is the old conservatory, and in its place, this stylish extension, giving Peggy and John the spacious kitchen and living area they were really after. It's fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. It really it's is fun. quite <laughs> it's special. What I wanted. It is exactly what I wanted, the social kitchen, mm. yeah. where we could be living and all together. But we also wanted a little bit of peace and quiet as well, so we have another little area that we can go to. But this was what I really yeah. wanted. Yeah. And I'm so pleased with it, I can't tell you. <laughs> and so they should be. And I'm pleased to see John's got his techie gadgets in too. Tell me about the kind of techie side of it. Uh, well, that, for example, we have a, a heating system where each zone, each radiator can be controlled separately, so it, it has its own schedule as opposed to a normal system which comes on at one time. Yeah. All the lighting is, is on a, a, a lovely system, mm -hmm. which means we can program the lights to do whatever we want and, again, control it from iPads. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm so impressed by what these two have achieved with the house, but it's the view that's really breathtaking. That's what it's about. It is. It's the view. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic. And there's the sea. Yes. It's the sea. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> the clever reworking of space has brought the outside in with stunning results. It was always clear John was after a project. And this one's far from finished. This is this is the nerve centre. Nerve centre. This is our, our project plan. Yeah. With all our wonderfully coloured stickers on, and you're on there as well. Oh yes. But the, the good thing as well is it gives us a record of of how long it took to do certain things. Yeah. So we can sort of use that for the next phase of, of course. the project. At the end of the day, with looking downstairs, do, do you feel that you had to compromise in any way, or did you actually nail it? I think we've nailed it, really. Uh, it, it took a long time to, act, to, to decide the layout of everything, yeah. but once we got there, I think the end result mm. is exactly what we're after. So John got himself the big project to get his teeth into, and with plenty more room still to tackle, he's a very happy man. And for Peggy, it's the little things that have pleased her. Hello. Oh. Another new room. Oh, yes. This was uh, the first thing we did to enable us to come out of the old kitchen and be in here while the building work was being done. So, so this was a bedroom, wasn't it? It was, indeed, yeah. with fabulous views. Yeah. And instead, we've made it a fabulous utility. It's, it and is a vast utility. Is my pantry that I was really excited with a about. A vast pantry. And it's with a, a marble shelf. With a marble shelf, yes, <laughs> perfect. It's a, my long term dream, that is. <laughs> And I know you haven't finished upstairs. We haven't, but... we haven't finished, but we will... I think by the early part of next year, I think we'll feel that we've sort of done what we can do. It's a lot of work, but it's been worth then it. Then you'll be able to relax and yeah, get involved in the community. I <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope we'll be able to drag John out of here a bit more. John's determination with the house project has meant fantastic results, and the big 130-mile move east from Derby has been a life-changing one for both of them. But finding their perfect property was only part of their mammoth mission. This whole move wasn't just about the house, was it? It was about a whole new lifestyle. Yeah, it was. In a whole new area. Yeah, and that, that's turned out really well as well. Yeah. 
It's uh, such a lovely place. All the neighbours are, are really friendly. Everybody's so nice, and the, the whole area, yeah. all the towns around, yeah. it's just wonderful. And, and of course, I've got to ask, this was your first home together. It, yes. it was indeed, yeah. You never bought a house together, and, and now yeah. you've done this massive project. Yeah. How does that all feel? I think it's been a success thus far. I'm sure it will be <laughs> as we continue on with the work. Yeah. We've had to agree on certain things and disagreed on others and so on. Yeah. But generally, we've, we've come to a, a compromise yeah. and uh, well, made sure it's... What we it looks for. fantastic and it, it delivers what you both wanted. Absolutely, yeah. 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 It, it is, when we look at it, we, we think that's exactly how we, we thought it should In be. In my head, mm. that was what I saw us producing. Well, happy days. Oh, well thank done, you. really well done. Thank it's been you. lovely coming back and seeing it's been great to see what you. you've done because yeah. you have absolutely <laughs> nailed it. Thank you. thank you. So it's smiles all round for my 60 something seaside seekers. Well, with a stunning new home by the sea, John and Peggy clearly have realised their dream. Yvonne and Lisa are also now enjoying a far more relaxed way of life which I think all goes to show that if you follow your heart and move to a new area, it can do wonders for your lifestyle, even if it does rain. <laughs> Jobs are good and I reckon 